Hello, everyone, and welcome to the webinar, Importance of Test Automation in the OTT Industry. We have got an excellent discussion ahead of us. Joining me are different panelists. Rick, Senior Director, Quality and Operations, Channel 5. Sasha, Chief Customer Officer, Sweet Test. Sam, Senior QA Engineer, SEDO. I'll start with an introduction from my side. My name is Purnima, based out of Stockholm, Sweden. I'm currently heading up the QA function for Europe and Latin America at Acido. I'm also driving the automation initiatives globally. For those of you who don't know Acido, Acido helps the world leading video service providers deliver and grow engaging video experiences. Over the past 15 plus years, we have developed a deep understanding of the video service ecosystem that helps us deliver scalable solutions for clients with varying needs of all shapes and sizes. We provide a combination of both products and services needed to support our customers at every stage of the video business journey. So from strategy and conception through to design, development, testing, delivery, and post-launch optimization. We can support all required platforms for any OTT service, like connected TVs, set-up boxes, game consoles, web browsers, mobile, and more. Today's webinar will focus on test automation on big screen devices, such as smart TVs, set-up boxes, game consoles, and so on. With this, I would like to introduce our panelist. Rick, over to you. Thank you, Pumamina. Uh, hello, my name's Rick. I'm the Senior Director for Quality and Operations in the digital team at Channel 5. So I'm responsible for ensuring our digital applications um, achieve the highest possible quality standards and our customers get the best possible experience when they interact with our brands. So for those of you who don't know, Channel 5 are a public sector broadcaster in the UK. We launched in 1997 and we provide linear TV channels like Channel 5, 5 Star, 5 USA and 5 Select. We're also part of the Viacom CBS global family. So that includes other brands like CBS and Pluto TV and Paramount and Comedy Central and Nickelodeon and many others. So the digital team at Channel 5 operate the, the MyFiber Milkshake um, services. So together with key partners like Exedo and Sweetest, we have relaunched the next generation of MyFiber applications across web, mobile, connected devices and games consoles. So moving forward from this point, um, we are focusing on a continued program of growth, which for us essentially means more content more functionality and more quality. So the, the intention is that, that will lead us to more video views, more ad impressions, and hopefully more registered users. Thanks, Rick. Sasha, over to you. Thank you, Ponima. And first of all, thank you also for having me on this panel. So my name is Sasha Milinovic, and I am the Chief Customer Officer at Sweetest. And as such, I'm involved in most of the custom activities here at Sweetest, uh, including helping our customers with their journey, and of course, uh, activities like pre-sales and after-sales as well. So a few words about Sweetest. Um, Sweetest was founded in 2014 and is headquartered in Prague, Czech Republic. The idea for a test automation tool was actually born in July of 2014, when we were developing and testing HVB TV applications for Pro7 Z1 back in the day. And then after two failed attempts, we finally found a way that was working and we decided to use an object-based test automation approach, which means we are inspecting what is going on inside the application during the runtime of the app and we don't rely on image comparison to do that. Right now, we are the only object-based test automation for apps on all living room devices, which includes smart TVs, Apple TV, Android TV, Roku, set-top boxes and game consoles. And on top of that, we do also support mobile apps and desktop browsers. Our claim is that we are like Selenium, but for living room devices. And now Sweetest is being used by over 50 companies worldwide. And those include ad techs, app developers, broadcasters, content providers, network operators, manufacturers, and testing services. 
Sam, over to you. Um, I'm an automation engineer at Tuxedo and have been the owner of the design and creation of test automation solution for Channel 5. In this context, um, I have been involved with the following. To understand Channel 5 needs and expectations, as well as any potential benefits they may gain by creation of an automated test solution, as well as using those findings to create a set of requirements for the automated test system. Investigate and understand the suitability and usability of Sweet Test or another tool for this role. Create a strategy for test automation development within a context of the Agile approach. Create test suite of automated tests using Sweet Test. And finally, together with Axido team, um, we have successfully delivered the automation solution to Channel 5. Thanks, Sam. Thank you, Rick, Sasha, and Sam for the great introduction. Today, we are coming together to share our joint experiences from an interesting automation journey. This webinar is divided into three parts. Why test automation? Challenges of test automation? And finally, the benefits of test automation. Let's start with the first topic, why test automation? I would like to give you a quick overview of the OTT industry and the challenges that lay ahead of us. So the OTT industry is striving with a global market that is expected to reach USD 179.9 billion by 2025. However, the upward trajectory also leads to increased competition amongst providers and consumers' expectations are rising. Now that there is a proliferation of options to choose from, users are becoming increasingly intolerant of services that don't run smoothly. So issues such as repeated playback errors, stalling, rebuffering, or services that feature a lacking user interface are quickly abandoned. So how do OTT providers balance quality with development costs and the necessary speed to market in order to deliver a viable service? So let's find out more in this panel discussion. A question to you, Rick. Can you tell us about the Channel 5 journey moving into test automation? Yeah, of course, I'd be happy to. So um, as, as I've mentioned already, we, we support and maintain the My5 video on demand application on all the main OTT platforms in the UK. Um, that, as you know, it includes an ever expanding an increasingly diverse range of devices and operating systems that we're trying to support. So in the past, those applications were, were not under continuous development. We would do a release every three or four months, uh, and it was possible to support that release cadence with manual testing alone with a, a relatively small team of manual testers. Um, but since then, uh, as part of our drive to continued growth, we've moved to a more frequent release cadence. So that means smaller releases being released to the public more often. And that's in order to reduce our time to market and get our new features and critical bug fixes in front of our customers faster. It's actually difficult to support that whilst relying on manual testing without compromising on quality. So. A few years ago, we realized we needed to look very seriously at test automation in order to support this, this increased um, cadence of releases. So when we started looking, we, we found that there were many, many options for web and mobile. Um, there are plenty of well-tried and tested solutions out there in the market, but actually the, the way forward for big screen TVs and set-top boxes was less well-established and it became quite challenging for us to find the right solution. Um, I came across Sweet Test a while ago at a, an exhibition in the UK um, and was really interested to see that they were not, off, not only offering a way to automate applications on big screen t uh, TVs and set-top boxes, but they were also offering a way for manual testers who perhaps don't have as much coding experience to easily create test scripts by recording their own user journeys in the apps. And since then, uh, we've been working actually really closely with Suitest and Acido to find a way to automate the My5 app on, on those kinds of devices. Um, and that journey has, well, it's, it's fair to say it's been challenging, um, but we've made some really good progress, particularly in the last few months. 
That sounds like an exciting transformation, Rick. Thanks for sharing. Sam, in terms of the technicalities, how does your test journey in SEDO look like? Uh, why do you think test automation is a critical success factor for building OTT applications? Well, being able to cognitively traverse the application on different platforms with each release or as often as it, as it can be practically done and ensuring complete test coverage each time is a very good way of ensuring product quality. Uh, the practical obstacle to this approach is that it is very resource demanding. Um, automation addresses this issue. It further frees manual testers to do other things like penetration testing, investigative testing, etc. Another critical success factor that automation addresses is a continuous evaluation of business crit critical functionalities like playback, which is a heart really of any media-based function, login, age restriction, remembering of a user-specific behavior, like for example, remembering where user has been and um, um, all those things where um, system talks to the backend, uh, payments, etc. Uh, and they're all key, uh, keys to keeping the quality of the apps high. <clears throat> the approach to testing needs to be strictly from a user perspective, the way we have resolved it anyway, um, which is black box text texting uh, where, uh, whereby test cases need to simulate some actual users and to end interaction with the app. In this way, the scripts become simulations of various end-to-end -end journeys through the map. As a result, the best source for the automated tests are existing manual test scripts. This kind of saves us um, um, needing to transform tests to kind of fit the uh, automated tests. And one can just step and start automating already existing scripts. In order to keep automated test scripts creation effective as well as scalable, tests need to be designed in modular fashion, whereby modules can be reused at different places within a test, so journey through the app. In the same way that the features that those modules test appear at multiple points during the user's journey through the app or in different journeys. Tests need to be able to cope with constantly changing content of the app without losing any of the test coverage. This can only be achieved through making tests data-driven. Uh, in other words, test scripts must be flexible enough to take different paths through the app, depending on which contents get encountered at the point of a specific test execution, while the test coverage is maintained. Um, here, one can take advantage of results of existing API tests, which are checking the health of the backend beforehand. Yeah. Thank you, Sam. Uh, thank you, Sam and Rick, for highlighting the importance of test automation. Um, as Rick was mentioning, you know, there are so many uh, providers when it comes to uh, mobile and web automation. Uh, perhaps, Sam, could you tell us more about, you know, how test automation on the big screen uh, is different from mobile automation? Um, one of the kind of clear, most obvious differences is that real user interacts with the app via remote control. Therefore, it is important that um, any tests uh, that are being run on the big screen device are supported like this. Our mobile platforms, generally speaking, have native test frameworks like APM, etc. Many big screen platforms, like I think, um, um, like for example, Samsung or LG, don't have any native test frameworks. As big screen devices are using quite a wide range of underlying platform, different operative systems and similar. <clears throat> in comparison to mobile devices, the tests need to be able to interact with different platforms. The same test scripts are able to be executed on different platforms without any need for serious modification or any modification at all. Um, also, compliance testing for release on big screens is more complex. Due to sheer number of devices and platforms, we can automate compliance tests so they can work on various platforms. In this way, we don't have to wait for the last build to do the submission test, but can do it more frequently or earlier. Yeah. Interesting, you, Sam. I understand that many OTT customers uh, take an easy approach to test automation when it comes to smart TVs. So they normally focused on browser-based automation than the actual real device-based automation. Sasha, could you tell us about the importance of testing on real devices versus browsers and emulators? Yeah, sure thing, Ponima. 
actually you have mentioned a very good point here because um, depending on what you want to test, testing with browsers or emulators is not necessarily a bad way. It is good if you're looking to have a quick feedback on what you have done is working or if you're looking to test some basic functionalities. But if you want to test something that is close to the hardware, then testing on a browser or emulator won't be good enough for you. And I think there are actually three main points that should that are worth mentioning, which show the importance of testing on real devices compared to browsers and emulators. Mm -hmm. So the first point is browsers and emulators don't have all the APIs, for example, DRM videos, et cetera. So you simply can't test all the features in an emulator. And the second point is device fragmentation. Browsers and emulators cannot simulate all possible implementations and they cannot account for device specific issues. Testing only in emulators will actually not give you the confidence to release a new build, and this is imperative. So, for example, the browsers that run on the devices, they can behave differently. And this is actually getting even worse if you compare between the model years and even between a premium or low cost model of the same manufacturer within the same year. So, it might happen to you that, for example, the HTML and CSS support on an older year model is not offering the same as from the latest models. So, what to do? Developers need to adjust for that. And uh, mm -hmm. similar like on mobile devices, where device fragmentation is a well-known issue for many years now, the industry is facing the same problem on smart TVs as well. So there are a plethora of devices from different manufacturers who often run their own operating systems on those devices. And testing manually on all of them is tedious, it is time-consuming, and frankly also becoming increasingly expensive when you need to think about purchasing those devices. Uh, even if you only pick the most important reference devices that are on the market. And by the way, to address this problem, we have actually built a public device lab for all of our customers, which we are launching right now. And the devices in our public device lab are managed by Sweetest and are made available to our customers to use. Developers and testers alike can use those remote devices not only for running test automation scripts on them, but also for debugging and manual testing work if needed. And then the third point I'd like to mention is the playback testing. On browsers, it is difficult. And with Vitas, you're able to get the info about different player states like playing, pausing, buffering, et cetera, which you can make assertions against. And I think those are the three major points. Now, there are certainly way more points, but those I think will do. Thanks, Sasha, for sharing the importance of test automation on real devices versus browsers. It is indeed more valuable to test on real devices. Let's move on to the second part of the webinar. That was challenges of test automation. Rick, could you please tell us what are the QA challenges that Channel 5 are currently facing? Could you also highlight the challenges you were and are facing during implementation? Of course, I'm happy to. So, um... Let's start with the general sort of challenges. So I think really it's it comes down to time versus quality. So our testing needs to be it needs to be faster, but without compromising quality. Um, there are various problems with the old manual testing approach, um, which we're trying to overcome. So I, I can list some of them now. We are we're looking at late detection of defects. It can often take days to find a release blocking defect rather than minutes. Um, a lengthy time to market. So when we're when we're delivering multiple projects in parallel with a small team, um, testing on one project often has to wait for completion of the previous project before it can start. So it has to be done sort of end to end rather than in parallel. And we're only doing testing manually during normal office hours. So we're not testing in the evening or early in the morning or at the weekends. So we're limited to eight hours of testing a day. And in many cases, our pre-release regression testing, it's necessary to do it on multiple devices. So we might have to do it on the latest device with the latest operating system and a device from a couple of years ago with an older version of an operating system and maybe another one that's even older than that. And that all has to be done one at a time, end to end, rather than in parallel. We often find that the thoroughness of the testing can suffer. 
So when, when you're under time pressure and you're doing all of your testing manually, it can often lead to shortcuts. So you find yourself saying, we need to, we need to release the application on this date. We haven't got time to spend three, three or four days doing manual regression testing. So let's just do a quick smoke test and then ship it to the customers. And that, as you can well imagine, means that more defects are released to the customers rather than being fixed first. And then there's another sort of side of things that we need to take into account, which is staffing. Um, as we increase our release cadence and we try to do more and more work in parallel, um, without automation, if we're trying to do everything manually, then we have to increase the size of the manual test team. And that has an obvious impact on our staffing budget. I mean, the bottom line here is that automation that allows rapid and repeat execution of tests, multiple tests running in parallel, and overnight scheduling is a no-brainer. We, we obviously have to do it. I think when we, when we start talking about specific challenges around implementation of any automation solution, um, for us at Channel 5, it comes down to resources and money. From a resources point of view, as I've mentioned already, we have a, a fairly dynamic and busy roadmap with multiple what we call business as usual projects running in parallel. It's quite difficult to siphon off resources from those projects to work on a new automation solution. We can't just stop those projects um, and move all of our resources to automation because we have a, a business to run and we have a roadmap that we have to, to deliver. Um, and with, with any technology project, whether it's automation or a new device or a new app, there are inevitable technical challenges that you have to overcome with, with devices or automation equipment. And it's difficult to, to resolve those issues quickly when all of your resources are focused on other projects. And I think uh, it, it, it's worth pointing out that actually any automation solution requ requires significant investment, um, like any technology project. And when you're doing a, a substantial investment in something, um, you, you want to calculate your return on investment. And that's actually quite difficult to do with test automation, um, particularly when you're doing it in, in small pieces and slowly and exploring the way forward. The, the implementation period can be lengthy and complex. And senior management can, can often take a view of, well, you've always tested manually, so why do I need to invest in this automation solution? You've managed without it until now. And then I guess there's another challenge, which is around the, the maintenance of the scripts. So, you know, you, you start a new project, you invest all your time and your effort into implementing the technology and writing your, your automated regression test pack and making sure that it works on all of your devices. And then all of a sudden you find you've got this test pack that you have to maintain. Um, you, you know, you're continuing to develop new features and new functionality for your application. And over time, your, your test pack and your test scripts gradually become out of date. So you need to invest time and, and effort into maintaining those scripts um, in parallel with the development of your, your application. And we actually also found it quite difficult to decide which test cases to automate. Mm -hmm. um, as we've touched on, as Sasha and Sam have already touched on, there are certain aspects of a video on demand application that are quite simple to automate. Things like, you know, navigation around the app and, and page loading. Um, we found anyway that automation of video playback was, was a bit more challenging. Um, I know there are solutions for it, but it wasn't quite as straightforward as, uh, as sort of general application navigation. Um, so we had a decision to make, do we, do we spend time investing our, our resources trying to solve the video testing problem, or do we focus on automating the easier test cases? Um, in the end, 
we went for the the easier test cases to begin with um but we're now focusing on the on the more challenging ones we also have a a decision to make around training versus recruitment now that we're into the the operation of automation rather than the implementation um we have a, a choice to make do we do we upskill our manual testers uh, and give them the skills that they need to to write code and to write automated scripts or do we hire a test automation engineer um, which we can do there's there's lots of them out there in the market lots of very skilled automation engineers but they're not cheap um, so we have that decision to face as well and then finally um, I'll stop talking in a minute um, and let you guys talk. But uh, I think my final point is around access to devices. Um, it's always a challenge, actually, um, maintaining a, a library of physical devices. Uh, even in a, in a normal time, um, when we're all working at the Channel 5 offices, we, we have to share devices between the team. And we don't necessarily have all the devices that we would like to have. Um, but then during a you know a global pandemic that that access to those devices is, is even more difficult with devices being spread out across the country in various testers home homes um, so coordination of access to those devices when we try to run automation scripts against those devices is is a challenge indeed thanks rick for highlighting the challenges of test automation at channel 5 Sasha, could you highlight the challenges of test automation uh, during the current pandemic and work from home scenarios? Yeah, sure. Uh, let me say, first of all, Rick, uh, thank you for this uh, quite comprehensive overview of the challenges. I think you have really uh, tackled a lot of valid points there and I couldn't have uh, summarized them better. And in regards of the challenges that arise with the pandemic situation, the work from home scenarios, I'm actually only going to touch briefly on two main aspects that we see when talking to our customers. Uh, the number one factor for sure is the scarce access to devices. And number two is the knowledge sharing and communication in general. It is harder to onboard new QA engineers if you need to scale up manual testing. So for the first point, um, we have actually developed different ways on how you can make your devices available for remote usage. Uh, so there are different ways of controlling devices with Suites. And those are, for example, a Suites Drive, this is for all platforms that have an API available that allows us to control the device we, we have. Uh, Sweetest Drive is a software that is installed on customers' premises and allows Sweetest to control customers' devices remotely, which actually offer an API for that, like uh, Roku, Apple TV, Android TV, etc. However, when it comes to uh, a smart TV and set-top boxes, you would need our hardware because you want to use them and you rely on sending the IR signals to the uh, devices and when there is no alternative way of controlling those. And then uh, last of the least, we have a companion app, uh, which uh, works as a remote control, which is available on iOS and Android. And uh, what I did, I actually did create um, uh, a little, um, little image to illustrate how simple the hardware setup uh, is, which I'm going to show. Uh, it shows the schematics of connecting a candy box to your devices. So it's a very easy process. You connect the candy box with the power supply. Uh, then you attach the IR blaster, which is sending the IR signals to the device. Uh, the IR blaster is actually attached to one of the ports on the back of the candy box. And you can use either an Ethernet cable or a simple telephone cable for doing that. Then you take the IR blaster uh, and attach it to the uh, IR receiver on the device. The blaster, this has a little gumdrop shaped end, which has an adhesive that you can place directly over the IR receiver of your TV. This gumdrop is translucent and it will let IR signals from a remote control through, should you want to operate the device also um, when not using Sweetest. And our IR emitters work with a very low power so that uh, they won't interfere if you have uh, several TVs of the same brand next to each other. Everybody who's uh, used to have uh, maybe a wall of TVs with different Samsung models knows exactly what I'm talking about. And then you just connect the candy box via Ethernet cable to the internet, uh, and that's it. Basically, the only important thing is that both the candy box and the device that you want to test on are in the same 
network. Um, optionally, you can also choose to also attach a USB camera feature to one of the USB ports of the candy box. And with that, you can also get a stream of what is going on on the device, which is very useful for remote work and debugging and solve this challenge that Rick just mentioned. And uh, to top things off, we also support the usage of a smart plug. So you can go and disconnect your devices from the power supply completely if you don't want to use them. So this whole setup takes only a few minutes and it's actually very well documented. Uh, so this was how you address the, the, how you make the devices available. There are certainly more options there, uh, which I don't want to go now into to more deep. But uh, the second point we talked about was uh, knowledge um, sharing and communication. Because during these times where we work from home, you have the, the challenge, okay, how do I get all the details about the individual device platform to my people? Do I set up a wiki or a conference page for, uh, for things? We will need to talk about resetting devices from time to time, uh, enabling developer mode, et cetera. So a um, lot of times uh, uh, teams are solving this by of course relying on Slacks or Teams uh, as most of us do having the aforementioned freaking confluence, but uh, certainly this um, really depends mostly on, on each individual company uh, and is um, a way how they, how they can do this. But the, net, the knowledge transition is the key point um, of, of, of doing this. And as we see on a daily basis, also with our own team, because uh, uh, let's say the new guys, they don't know all the in and out of the Apple TV compared to the LG, compared to the Samsung Tizen device, et cetera. And this certainly is, um, those are the two challenges, I think. Yeah. Thanks, Sasha. Knowledge sharing and frequent communication is indeed key. Sam, uh, can you perhaps share some technical challenges you faced during the pandemic? Um. First, I would like to thank to Rick and Sasha for some very good points on this issue. Um, Oxida was very flexible and working remotely um, than before the pandemic. Um, so it wasn't, this problem wasn't new to us. Um, Oxida team was quite quick at adapting to working remotely. Uh, even so, we were quite surprised about how little we could do to transition to, to working from home locations. As pandemic started, we decided to leave the office and the devices between the homes of different team members. Then all we needed to do is to add a sweetest solo candy stick devices. I think Sasha was referring to some of them. Um, now situated at various homes. And our processes were working almost the same as before. Um, Sweet test is cloud-based, enabling us to both store test scripts on the cloud, executing them from the cloud, and store the results on the cloud. Uh, where they can be viewed by anybody who has an access to the account, uh, regardless of where the actual devices are really situated in the world. Uh, this meant the devices could be reached for both test creation as well as test running remotely. Um, the setting up of the new devices was somewhat more complicated, but even this was quite easily resolved via Skype and similar. Yeah. Thanks, Sam. Um, other than the challenges that have been discussed, uh, one of the challenges that comes to mind uh, is the importance of writing robust test scripts, you know, to avoid frequent maintenance of the code base. Sasha, what are some recommendations you have uh, to the customers to improve stability and avoid flakiness in their test? Yeah, thanks, Pamina. This is a very good question. I see that. Uh... Quite often, um, I think I can give a couple of recommendations here. First of all, to speak about the, the flakiness. So uh, a flaky test is, a, is generally considered a test that both passes and fails periodically without any code changes. But flakiness can be different. And we have to distinguish between uh, false positives, which means the, the case is, uh, the test is um, not failing, is passing, uh, <laughs> uh, although it shouldn't which actually is, uh, is really bad for test automation and is something that should be avoided at all cost, because with this sort of flakiness, you can no longer rely on your test results. Uh, and reasons for this is usually uh, it happens because of mistakes in the test scenarios, but those likely can be easily avoided in general. And the second uh, thing is a false negative, 
which is when the um, test fails, although it should not have failed. Uh, those are less harmful, but they do happen way more often. Uh, in this case, it is usually enough to fix the cause of the failure and run the test again, or even sometimes just test this bit manually and still saves you a lot of time compared to testing everything manually. Uh, the reasons for this happening is usually, again, in mistakes in the test scenarios or an unstable environment, etc. Those false negatives are generally harder to completely avoid, avoid but I think they can at least be minimized. Another recommendation that we give to our customers is a, a stable environment. So what does this mean? So you have to, uh, to have your devices properly managed. So for example, if a device has to be used for other purposes, it should be returned to its proper state after that. I can give you an example. So if you need to switch network to use a VPN for some specific edge case testing, or for example, if you need to turn off the network completely to see how the app behaves when it's offline, then you have to reverse this so that afterwards uh, the test would not fail because of the conditions of the device having been changed. This also applies if you have to change channel settings, for example, or the, actually the developer mode on some of the devices is not on or off uh, there. So in this case, what does it mean? It is actually best or better to have a person assigned who is responsible for the state of the device labs and kind of keeps an eye on keeping the dev uh, devices in the same state after they have been used for several different scenarios. And then we also recommend using a stable server environment. What does it mean? It's like uh, having a preset of stable data in your CMS for testing purposes. Those can, of course, vary depending on the goal of the particular test. Uh, and it would, for example, not work if the approach would uh, be to look for monitoring tests. But I also give you a few examples of those. For example, you can have a set of videos available that, was, that would always show up uh, in search. So you're able to test the search and get the results that you're expecting. So you can assert against those. Or you can have a set of videos that would actually have a broken stream. So you can test whether the error handling is done correctly and the user sees what he's supposed to see. And there, and there are many other examples which are strongly depending on how your app looks like, what is the structure of it, etc. Uh, the last um, recommendation is about the test um, authoring. And the stability really depends heavily on the way tests are written. Uh, of course, you should follow best practices to reduce flakiness. And uh, those are, for example, uh, add assertions with longer timeouts in between page loads so that you can allow the app to have more time to load data under different network conditions. And then, um, yeah, and basically, if you have to make a choice between making a test too strict or too low, I'd say it is better to go with the more strict assertions to avoid those unwanted false positives. Very useful. Thanks, Sasha, for sharing your recommendations. So far, we have heard that while the importance of test automation is huge, there could be some practical challenges to overcome as well. At Acido, quality is the top priority of all our deliveries. The QAE team, consisting of both manual QA engineers and automation engineers, are completely embedded in the entire project development lifecycle. This helps to provide quick feedback to developers and shorten the overall time to market. Sam, could you help us elaborate on how test automation works in conjunction with other project activities at Acido that takes on for a normal, uh, typical OTT customer? Certainly, Purnima. <clears throat> at Acido project, uh, projects, QA and automation are embedded in the entire development process together with application design uh, and development, as well as manual QA. This, this embedding, being embedded, position of being embedded has enabled us to do the following. Uh, test engineer has live access to customers' expectations as they develop or get introduced and can feed this back into the test automation development strategy or plan. Especially when tests are being uh, developed in parallel with the application, it becomes easy to troubleshoot issues. Um, it's important to remember that usually um, apps are developed in the agile sense, so requirements can change from uh, one iteration of the cycles to another. Test engineers have direct access to creators of the application. 
um, one is literally sitting next to a developer and it's very easy to kind of um, query uh, functionality or some technical details of the app. Um, it helps both with functional and technical perspective. Uh, in the same way, a test engineer could feed any findings of the investigation penetration, penetration testing process that inevitably needs to be done during the creation of automated tests. So it's kind of like something that comes um, as well as uh, development of automated tests. One discovers bugs and issues and problems um, uh, during the uh, development of tests that possibly manual testers never kind of thought about before. And one can feed that directly back to the developers. Um, in this kind of setup, the engineers are well positioned, test engineers are well positioned to influence the process of construction of the application in a way that makes the application more automation friendly. Yeah. Thanks for the detailed overview, Sam. Now let's move on to the most interesting part and final part of this webinar, that is benefits of test automation. ACEDO has helped set up UI automation for big screens for Channel 5 using the Sweet Test Framework. Rick, could you please share with us what are the benefits you see with test automation? Yeah, of course. So um, for us at Channel 5, um, I guess I've mentioned already that our, uh, really our business model is about delivering as many video views and therefore advertising revenue as, as possible. Um, and the way that we do that, it's not just about having great content. It's also about having really high standards of quality in our applications. Um, so we found that we have a much better chance of achieving higher standards of quality if we do automation um, because regression testing is faster, which means we have a faster time to market. So that means we get the new features that our users want, but also fixes for, for critical issues, we get those in front of our customers as quickly as possible. And we're able to detect defects much earlier in the, in the development life cycle. And all of that means that we get a reduced churn for our customers. They get a, a higher quality of experience, which means they are more likely to come back to our application again the next day or the next week or the next month and continue consuming our content and continue seeing ad advertisements, which is how we you know, make our revenue. Um, I guess the other side of it is that we've also seen increased productivity in our test team, um, basically because they're able to do more things in parallel. You know, they run the, the automated test script on, on a device for a while that's running for a few hours, they're able to go and do other things. Um, at the same time. So they finished the day having achieved a lot more. Yeah. Thanks, Rick. Uh, could you also perhaps share with us what value test automation has created for Channel 5? Of course, yeah. So I guess the main example for us would be the um, testing for our My5 app on LG TVs. Um, so regression testing used to take three or four days per device um, and as i've mentioned already so when, when we're preparing to do a release we often have to test on several different variations of lg tv so we could be talking about two weeks worth of testing at least before each release um, now that test cycle only takes you know a few hours so there's a clear benefit there um, it's also technically possible for us to run the, the test pack on multiple devices at the same time. So we can test on the latest LG TV with the latest operating system, and then we can test on the model from last year and the model from a couple of years before that. And we can run it all at the same time and finish the, the, the test execution within a few hours and finish the day with three or four test reports rather than having to wait two weeks for those test reports. Um, and as I, as I mentioned already, our testers are now actually able to, to do multiple things at the same time in parallel whilst the, the, the test script is running. So they can do um, more detailed testing, manual testing, like exploratory or smoke testing. Um, 
so they learn a lot more about how the application behaves and they're better placed to find more defects early on um, and as I say they achieve more at the end of the day so actually they feel better about their, their own performance and they feel more motivated to come to work the next day yeah really good thanks a lot Rick for sharing this so in spite of all the challenges we discuss there are huge benefits with test automation finally I would like to ask an open question to the panelist um, is the use of test automation by OTT services prevalent from your perspective what are other services missing out on if they are not leveraging test automation okay if i may i will uh, go ahead and uh, share my uh, thoughts on this i think in general the usage of test automation is is widely acknowledged within the industry and actually everybody is aware of the usefulness and especially when you're talking about established parts like backend testing api testing etc unit tests for cold source things are already like standard and nobody questions the usefulness of those anymore when talking about connected devices uh, it is the same but uh, it is often not yet implemented at least this is what i can see clearly when i'm talking to the customers so um, rick mentioned that already before and it, it's equivalent that test automation is an investment and uh, reaping the rewards does not come immediately and then it means certainly the return of investment uh, uh, of it has to be taken into consideration. It's like a very big uh, uh, point that you have to think about. Because let's say uh, uh, reaching 100% automation coverage, that is going to be costly. And that is uh, nobody can afford to do that. So finding the right balance here uh, is key. And thus you can somehow find uh, uh, the right level of automation coverage that, is, that you feel comfortable with. Uh, I like the thing that Rick mentioned before that basically you were going and then the beginning to start with the easy things to automate, which is also something that we recommend to our customers because, you know, look at the test cases that, that have a lot of repetitive things in it and where the results are very clearly to understand basically failed or passed uh, is clear. And if you can get rid of those, you already, uh, you know, automated quite a significant part of your daily monkey business work there. And uh, I, for myself, can say confidently that uh, the customers that we have who are embracing the idea of test automation, like Channel 5, but also our other customers, are extremely happy with the results. And I think they would not want to go without it um, anymore because of the already mentioned points like faster time to market, higher product quality, and thus less uh, customer churn, and just being able for the QA team to focus on more meaningful tasks. Thank you for sharing your experiences and views, Sasha. Much appreciated. Finally, thank you, Rick, Sasha, and Sam for an amazing discussion. It was great to hear your experience with test automation on big screen devices. On the surface, any automated approach can seem like a magic solution that can only result in a flawless product release. However, it's important that OTT providers adopt a calculated approach to testing. Test automation should consider the entire video ecosystem and teams working on testing should have a solid technical skill set covering APIs, backend and frontend systems. Compliance testing or compliance expertise is also vital in order to check for issues that are device specific as well as automating across multiple platform on all associated devices. Such a holistic approach will get you closer to the magic solution. If you have any questions or need any more information in this regard, you can reach out to us. The contact details are provided in the registration form. Thank you all for listening and have a great 2021 and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody.